In the near future, humans extract ancient DNA from a long-extinct creature. They patch up the missing pieces with genes from a modern-day animal. Then, in a high-tech lab, they bring the species back to life. Sounds familiar? Well, yes, that's actually the plot of the original Jurassic Park. But the thing is, we're now living in the timeline where researchers are doing exactly that. Although this time, the star of the show isn't a raptor or a T-Rex. Believe it or not, scientists at Colossal Biosciences want to bring back the giant moa. Think of it as an ostrich, only twice as tall and way bulkier. It was a massive flightless bird that went extinct almost 600 years ago. The moa once roamed the forests of New Zealand, towering up to 12 feet tall with its neck stretched. This makes it the tallest bird to ever walk the planet. It weighed almost 500 pounds. But funny enough, that doesn't make it the heaviest bird that ever lived. That crown goes to Madagascar's elephant bird. But still, 500 pounds of bird is not something you want running at you in the woods. The giant moa didn't have wings or a beak built for battle. But it didn't need them. For thousands of years, it lived in peace because it had no natural predators literally being the top bird. Well, almost. The only thing that could take down a moa was the Haas eagle, a giant bird of prey with a 10-foot wingspan and claws like steak knives. That was the balance of nature. Until people arrived. Around the 13th century, the Maori settled in New Zealand. And as humans do, they adapted quickly. The moa, big and slow as it was, became a crucial and probably delicious food source. Within just a few generations, the moa was gone, and not long after, so was the host's eagle. No more moa meant no more meals. It's just how nature and survival work. The Maori were skilled hunters, making a life in a new land. But their arrival marked a turning point in New Zealand's ecosystem one we're still talking about today. The moa wasn't just big, it played a huge part in keeping forests healthy. Now, 600 years later, scientists want to recreate it using cutting-edge technology and ancient clues. But why go through all this effort to resurrect a bird that's been gone so long? Well, according to Colossal Biosciences, the same company behind those gene-edited direwolf cubs that we talked about before it's not just about the wow factor. They say moas helped shape the landscape itself. In New Zealand, moas helped control vegetation and spread native plant seeds. They kept forests from becoming overgrown and unbalanced. Without them, some plants lost their main seed carriers, and invasive shrubs started to take over areas once kept in check. So the idea is, if we can't rewind the clock, maybe we can reboot the system. Introduce an animal that fills the same job that can help restore what's missing. Okay, but how do you bring back an extinct species? And is that even possible? Well, sort of. But not in the sci-fi clone a complete dinosaur way like in a movie. The original moa has been gone for centuries and its DNA is damaged, degraded and full of holes. So instead of making a perfect copy, researchers are going to remix, so to speak. They'll take whatever usable MOA DNA they can find and patch the gaps using genes from its living relative, probably the emu. With a tool called CRISPR, which is like a Photoshop for genomes, they'll stitch it all together, tweak the embryo, and grow it in a lab. If all goes well, the result will be something that looks, walks, and stomps like a MOA, but not exactly a genetic twin. It won't be a clone, and it definitely won't be 100% authentic. However, Colossal Biosciences says that's fine. If it behaves like a MOA and fills the same job in the ecosystem, that's mission accomplished. So no, we're not recreating the past. Not literally. We're building something new that plays the same role. But here is where it gets interesting. Colossal Biosciences seems to be just getting started. They've got an entire extinction comeback roadmap in place. In addition to the giant moa, the company is also working on reviving the woolly mammoth, the dodo, and the thylacine, also known as the Tasmanian tiger. 
Each one vanished under different circumstances, but the goal is the same. To create a modern version that can fill the ecological gaps those animals left behind. Woolly mammoths were Ice Age elephants. They were befriending ground sloths and shaking the Arctic ground with each step, knocking down trees and flattening snow. During the Ice Age, this region wasn't the frozen wasteland we know today. It was called the Mammoth Steppe, a dry, windy grassland stretching from Spain to Siberia to Alaska, filled with cold, hardy grasses and scattered shrubs. Mammoths helped keep it that way. However, some scientists think that their disappearance may have turned open ecosystems into soggy, carbon-trapping wetlands. So now, the idea is to mix mammoth DNA with Asian elephants to create a fuzzy, cold-loving hybrid that could help the Arctic stay grassy instead of swampy. Maybe even help slow down climate change by keeping the permafrost frozen a little longer. The dodo bird is probably the most famous extinct animal in history. It lived on the island of Mauritius, where it ate fruit and helped spread seeds across the forest. After European sailors arrived, the number of dodos slowly dwindled. It disappeared in the late 1600s, less than a century after it was first discovered. And some scientists believe that its absence had lasting effects on the island's ecosystem. One example would be the Tambalacoque tree, also known as the dodo tree, which might have depended on the dodo to help its seeds sprout. The theory has been debated, but it's safe to say that the dodo had a part in keeping the island's plant life balanced. Now, Colossal is aiming to reintroduce a bird that's similar to the dodo, hoping it can help those forests regrow as well. And then, there's the thylacine, my favorite. It's part wolf, part kangaroo, with tiger-like stripes. Despite these strange features, it was a top predator and helped control prey populations in its habitat. But after being blamed for attacks on livestock, it was hunted to extinction. Researchers believe a new thylacine could rebalance nature where things have gone out of hand. So yeah, the MOA might be the headline this time, but it's just one project on a much longer to-do list. However, this is where the big debate begins. Because not everyone's on board with this whole bring back a beast plan. While scientists dream of second chances, plenty of people still have big questions. For example, are we actually helping the environment or just poking it with our really expensive science stick? These new animals aren't exact copies. They're mashups. Close enough, maybe, but not the originals. Also, ecosystems aren't machines where we can just swap out a part and expect them to work the same. There's also the wildcard factor. A lab-made MOA might not act like the ancient one. It could munch the wrong plants or throw off the balance by outcompeting something that wasn't even around the last time it existed. Some experts worry that tossing new species into today's ecosystem could backfire. After all, the world they're coming back to? It's different. And in some cases, their old homes don't even exist anymore. There's also a deeper concern. The message this sends about extinction. If people believe we can just bring things back, Will they take conservation any less seriously? Will protecting endangered species feel less urgent if extinction stops being permanent? So while the science behind all this is undeniably impressive, the ethical questions aren't going away. Should we be reviving species, or should we be doing more to protect the ones that are still here? If both options are true, how do we do so successfully? Whether it's mammoths, moas, or dodos, one thing's clear. We're not just studying nature anymore. We have the power to rewrite it. And like Uncle Ben said, with great power comes great responsibility. Let me know what you think. And as always, stay on the bright side. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.